Okay, so we've already talked about sums and difference, difference identities for cosine, so now we're going to talk about the sum and difference identities for sine and tangent. And you don't have to memorize these identities um, because they are on your formula sheet, but you have to be able to recognize them quickly so that way you can um, complete the problems quickly. All right, so here are your um, sine identities, and then here are your tangent identities. And so now we're going to take a look at using them in some examples. All right, so let's look at the first one. Example A. All right, we have sine of 75 degrees. Well, 75 degrees isn't on our unit circle, and we need to find the exact value. So what can we do to the 75 so that we can still represent 75 degrees, but using values that are on the unit circle? Well, we can change the 75 into 30 plus 45. Because 30 plus 45 is still 75, and now we can use our sum identity for sine. So we have sine of 30 times cosine of 45 plus sine of 45 times cosine of 30. Okay? And so now we're just going to find those values on our unit circle, or if we already know them. Uh, we know sine of 30 is 1 half, cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, and cosine of 30 is um, square root of 3 over 2. Alright, so we multiply these and we get the square root of 2 over 4. And then we multiply these and we get square root of 6 over 4. So we get square root of 2 plus square root of 6 all over 4. All right, so let's take a look at part B of the first example. We had tangent of 7 pi over 12. Again, we want to rewrite the 7 pi over 12 so that it's something that's on our unit circle, so that it's using angles that are on the unit circle. So we can rewrite this tangent of 7 twelfths, we can change that into 3 pi over twelfths, I said 7 twelfths, it's 7 pi over twelfths, plus 4 pi over twelfths, okay, because 3 pi over twelfths plus 4 pi over twelfths is 7 pi over twelfths, and then we can simplify those and we'll find that they are values that are on the unit circle. So we get pi over 4 and pi over 3. And those are on the unit circle, so we can find the exact values. All right, so then we want to use our tangent, um, our sum for tangents uh, identity. So, uh, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, it, since it's plus, we're going to say tangent of pi over 4 plus tangent pi over 3 over 1 minus tangent pi over 4 times tangent pi over 3. Okay? So that's how we set up the identity. All right, so now we evaluate. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Tangent of pi over 3 is square root of 3. So then we have 1 minus 1 times square root of 3, so that's going to be square root of 3. Now, this is not our final answer. We need to rationalize. So remember in Algebra 2, when we rationalize, we're looking to make this a difference of two squares so we can get rid of the radical um, in the denominator. So whatever this denominator is, we multiply by the exact same thing, just change the sign in the middle. Alright, so then we get 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times square root of 3 is square root of 3. Square root of 3 times 1 is square root of 3. And square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. 
And down here, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times square root of 3 is the square root of 3. Negative square root of 3 times 1 is negative square root of 3. And negative square root of 3 times square root of 3 is negative 3. And we just simplify that. So we have 4 plus 2 square roots of 3. And then these two will cancel. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Well, that can simplify. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And so that is the tangent of 7 pi over 12 in exact form. So now let's take a look at part C, and we'll just do it right up here. 40 degrees and 160 degrees are not on our unit circle, so what we can do is combine these. This is the difference of sine, or it's a difference identity for sine, so we can say that that's the same thing as sine of 40 minus 160, which is sine of negative 120. And if you want to look at um, a coterminal angle, then we would add 360 to that. So then we're going to look at sine of 240 degrees. And we get negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, example two. Hmm. All right, example number two. We want to write each function as an expression of theta. Okay, so we're going to use our sum in uh, identity for sine. So we just plug in the 30 for A and the um, theta for B, and we know sine of theta is equal to um, one half. And we know cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And there you go. All right, now let's take a look at B. We have tangent of 45 degrees minus theta, so this is a difference identity for tangent. So we plug in 45 for A and theta for B. And then we know tangent of 45 degrees is 1. Okay, so then when we add, or when we multiply tangent of 45, which is 1, times tangent of theta, it's just tangent of theta. All right, so now let's take a look at part C. We have sine of 180 plus theta. So now we're using a sum identity for sine. And so we have sine of 180 times cosine of theta, okay? Actually, let's move this down a little. All right, so let's take a look at part C. We have sine of 180 times cosine of theta plus sine of theta cosine of 180, okay? And we know that the sine of 180 is 0. We know the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So here this becomes 0. Forgot my sign there. Let's fix that. And so we get negative sine theta. And that's your answer.